Hi dear students. A warm welcome to learn prose from your 9th standard English book. Dear viewers, like, share, comment and subscribe our channel if you like it. Unit 3 Prose Old Man River written by Dorothy Deming. Dorothy Deming was an American nurse and children's writer. She was born on 8th June 1893. in New Haven Connecticut During her childhood she traveled to a lot of places with her family as her father was telegraph operator She was a graduate of New York City Presbyterian Hospital School of Nursing in 1920 She served as assistant to editor director and journal editor of public health nursing from 1935 to 1942 and she worked for 10 years for American Public Health Association from 1942 to 1952 she published the highly successful penny marsh in 1938 which was so popular that high schools created penny marsh clubs for girls who wanted to become nurse she also wrote about 20 fictional novels she died in january 1972 in winter park florida dear children let's learn few synonyms before we learn the lesson and to make our learning easy and better cloudburst a sudden violent rainstorm picture a large jug shudder shiver in fear hark listen pay attention bump to hit something with force keep our heads keep or stay calm pails buckets panting taking short quick breath rescue save grab grasp or seize roughly pitch dark completely dark porch portico or entrance squeak a short high pitched sound or cry children i hope you must have heard or read about natural disasters can we name some yes tsunami flood tremor drought fire erosion etc actually these natural disasters cause serious damages and loss of life children What do you think might be the reason for all these? I think the root cause of all these are due to the imbalance created in our environment. It can't be avoided, but at least can be reduced to certain extent by stopping all our activities and practices that are harmful for our environment. Well, let's get started with our lesson. Old Man River. It is a drama. First, let's see the characters: Amy Marshall, seventeen-year-old girl; Betty Marshall, Amy's younger sister; Dick, Amy's younger brother; Rosefield, sixteen-year-old, Marshall's neighbor; Sarah Field, Rose's sister, nine-year-old; Jim Hall, seventeen-year-old, another neighbor of Marshall. Mr Peters member of the Red Cross disaster committee Penny Marsh Red Cross nurse okay shall we summarize the lesson in few words children well one day late afternoon in march emmy and rose are knitting betty is looking at the pictures in the magazine sitting around a table in the living room then rose goes to the window followed by emmy and betty talking about rain soon jim arrives with his help they get ready or get organized with the things like fresh water lantern candles food blankets and first aid kit suddenly they hear sara's call or cry from the playhouse jim rescued her from there jim waved a flashlight from the top of the roof for someone to help them Little while later Tom Peters and Miss Marsh 
from Red Cross came in a boat and took Rose, Betty and Sara along with them. They hurried to the Red Cross hospital because Sara broke her leg below the knee. And they gave an extra lantern and a jar of coffee to Emmy and Jim to wait for them or they would send some other boat to save Emmy and Jim. Hence, Emmy thanked Tom Peters and the Red Cross Bell Acute Disaster Management in the town. Unit 3 Prose Old Man River Written by Dorothy Deming The first scene starts late afternoon in March in the living room of Emmy Marshall's house. Emmy, a girl of 17 year old, Betty, her younger sister, Rosefield, her neighbor, are sitting around the table in the hall. Amy and her neighbor Rose are knitting. Betty is looking pictures in a magazine. Now, Amy's mom is not at home. She took Dick, her younger brother, to the dentist in the town and she said that on her way back, she would drop in or meet Mrs. Brandt for a recipe. Emmy's father is in Chicago on a business. Now Rose says that it gets dark early during these rainy days and she goes near the window to raise the shade or window curtain a bit and peers or watching outside through the window. She tells it rains cats and dogs which means there is a heavy rainfall and the backyard is a small lake. Ami puts on the electric light and goes near the window. Ami joins Rose at the window telling that she has never seen it rain so hard and that is the third day of the rain. Betty, the younger sister of Amy, joins them at the window dropping her magazine and she says their backyard is not a small lake, it is a sea. She also tells that the radio said the river was above flood stage this morning without knowing the meaning. Then Amy explains Betty that means the water is above the white line on the bank at Thompson Bridge. Once it comes like that, it must have covered the south meadows or the fields and the highways. Rose adds, it is not only the rainwater, but also due to the snow melting in the hills in the north part of the state, they get a lot of water here. Now all the three girls are near the window talking about rain. Suddenly they hear a noise of stamping feet and they all look at the direction of the noise. That is Jim Hall, a 17 year old neighbor. He is fully drenched and his raincoat and helmet is shining due to rainwater. He enters heavily panting because he came running all the way from school. He says that it is a cloud burst. The river is rising and the Bernard Dam is full an hour ago. Now Jim asks Emmy about her parents. Emmy tells that her mom went to the dentist for Dick and she is expected very soon and her dad is in Chicago on a business. Meanwhile, Emmy gets a call from her mother and her mom says that she can't get back home from Mrs. Brands because the bridges between their home and town are underwater. Her mom asks Rose to spend the night there informing her mother over phone. When Amy announced this to Rose, Rose happily dials the number on phone to inform her mother about her stay in Amy Marshall's house. But she is not getting the connection. Jim explains her that it is because the lines are underwater. The girls under the leadership of Jim Hall get organized by taking precautionary measures. Betty gets ready with flashlight, candles, lamps and lanterns. Rosefield is getting ready or filling the tubs 
pails, bowls and pitchers with fresh water just in case if there is no water for drinking or maybe the water becomes unsafe to drink. Amy and Jim are checking on food, blankets, coats and first aid kit. When the water is up around the garage, Amy first thought it is just a pool in the garden. But after Jim's explanation, she understood few things that their house is in the direct line of the river. They are already cut off from the south side and they can't get out by the main road. The old man river himself is creeping up to their door. At this point of time, Amy feels scared or frightened. But Jim encourages her, reminding their previous experience and the way they came over safely from them, like for example school fire. Jim also feels glad and proud that he served on the Junior Red Cross Emergency Squad during the war. Dear children, hope we all know the Red Cross Society is an international humanitarian service organization which is the best independent, non-religious, non-political voluntary organization. It was established in 1863 by Jean Henry Dunant in Geneva, Switzerland. Okay, the girls are in the hall with the necessary things but suddenly they hear a child's voice from far off and they recognize it is Sarah's who is in the playhouse porch. Porch means portico. Amy says that luckily the playhouse is on high ground. When the girls gathered near the window, Jim goes to rescue Sarah in rain. On his return with Sarah, Jim cautions them that soon the playhouse would be floating out in the running water. So he says that he is going to climb out on the roof and start waving the flashlight for someone to come and rescue them. With this, the first scene comes to an end. Dear students, let's start with scene 2. One hour later with the same settings. Now all the girls are in the hall. Sarah is sleeping. Betty is trying to read in the candlelight. Betty says she is unable to read in the candlelight. They are discussing about their grandmothers and how they would have read in the candlelights or maybe they would have gone to bed when the night fall. Jim instructs the girls to go to the attic with enough food and water. But Amy goes to collect her father's most valuable books and mom's jewels. But Jim warns her that they need water and food more than books and jewels. By the time they hear something bumping or bouncing against the house, soon they see or recognize it is Tom Peters, a member of the Red Cross Disaster Committee and Miss Marsh, the Red Cross nurse. They have come in a boat. Tom Peter asks children about their parents. At the time, Sarah falls off the step ladder and breaks her right leg just below the knee. Miss Marsh says that they can splint it, which means support it with pillows and umbrella and lift her safely into the boat. And at once she asks them to take her to the emergency Red Cross Hospital. Mr. Peters takes Sarah Rose and Betty along with them, leaving Jim and Amy behind with an extra lantern and a jar of coffee and advising them to remain on roof until they get back or send some other boat to save them. Amy thanks Tom Peters, but Tom Peters asks her to thank the Red Cross for the timely help. At last, Jim and Amy are happy that they have a well-equipped disaster committee in that town. Dear children, read the lesson repeatedly for better understanding. Study well. Happy learning. Thank you.